In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're taking a look at schema.org from the eyes of a beginner. All right, let's go. Thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching or maybe you've been watching a while and you have not yet hit that subscribe button, please do so now. We create new content each week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. All right, so on this channel, we sometimes talk about pretty complex elements of schema.org and structured data, but today I wanted to do something a little bit different and take a very high level view of what schema.org is and why you might want to use it with your website. So today's Google's different. This is not your grandma's Google. We've got a lot more than just blue links on a white piece of page. Uh, we've got rich cards, we've got knowledge panels, we've got FAQs, we've got featured snippets and more. There's more ways to rank and there's more available positions for you to own than ever before. In order to earn some of these positions, you need to be leveraging schema.org structured data within your website pages. So what is schema.org? If you're not familiar with it, it was founded by Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Yandex. And the goal was to create and promote schemas for structured data on the internet, specifically for the search engines, so that the computers themselves could actually understand context. So schema.org is a vocabulary that allows or helps search engine crawlers better understand the context of your website. And when you use structured data properly, you can earn certain rich features within Google SERPs. So some of the more prominent ones would be article or breadcrumb, FAQs, how-to, local business, organization markup, which is actually called logo by, by Google, uh, but you can actually extend that further and, and use organizational markup. You can do products and services. You can do question and answer. You can add reviews to your listings, video, and a whole lot more. So how does schema.org work? Well, schema.org is set up in a hierarchical order with the most broadest type uh, called thing. And each of these items have properties that further describe what they actually are. Some of these properties are gonna be required while other them just add more detail and context. So if you look at the Google documentation, you'll see that on certain types of structured data, you have to put name or URL or another bit of information but you can also add extra to better describe it, but it's not necessarily required. So as you choose a property uh, that you want to define, you want to be as specific as possible. And in order to do that, you can just use the search function on schema.org. So let's go over there really quick, so I'll show you what that looks like. So this is schema.org. Now you can really go down rabbit holes on this site um, and maybe even get yourself super confused. I know that I've done that a time or two, especially when I was really learning uh, what structured data was and how to leverage schema.org. But if you're curious about a type of markup, you can use this search bar and it's pretty good. For instance, if you wanna learn about organizational markup, you can just type in organization and now you've got all these different types. You can see here organization at the top and it'll tell you all of the different properties associated with it. Now, if you're looking at this and you're going, well, this isn't helpful because all these things don't mean anything to me and you wanna see some examples, you can go down to the bottom of this page where they'll actually give you example code. So you can see right here would be text on a page. This is what the user, you and I would see. And then if you click on these different markup types and I would use JSONLD, you can see what that actually would look like. So this is how you should build your markup, right? You've got the schema type, you've got the context, which will always be schema.org in this case, the type, which is organization, and then you've got some properties. So like, where's the business located? Here's the address. It's got an email address, it's got fax numbers. Um, you can put members, so people who are part of the organization or alumni. So as you can see here, it's a way to structure this information that we saw right here. Now, if you scroll up, you're going to see that there's more specific types. So if you're one of these specific types of organization, maybe you're a local business, you're going to want to use local business instead of just organizational market. So you want to be as specific as possible, and sometimes it's just going to take a little bit of trial and error. You'll notice that all of these other properties are also valid and can be used but they're not all required. You know, you just, you wanna go through and find out what Google requires and then leverage those. You might be asking yourself, well, where do I find that information? Well, let's hop over to the rich features page within developers.google to see what's required. So we're here on the explore the search gallery, which can be found at developers.google.com forward slash search. 
with a whole bunch of other information here. We'll make sure to link to that. That way you can see where this is, uh, where we're getting this information. But if you want to earn one of these rich features that's listed here, as you can see, a lot of the ones that we talked about uh, in that previous slide showed these, you're going to need to follow their guidelines. So let's talk about an organization again. And in this case, Google's going to call it logo. So if we click get started, it's going to give us a little bit of information about this markup type. As you can see here, this is a knowledge panel and the logo is right here. It'll tell you how to add this structured data. And then it'll also give you an example of what the code should look like. Now, within each of these, you'll see guidelines and it'll tell you, you need to follow these guidelines if you want to appear in search. So there's certain required properties. And for logo, you need to have an actual logo and it needs to be an image object. And they've got some requirements here. So follow these. Um, and the file format needs to be supported by Google Images, so you can't use uh, SVGs. That's not something that Google is going to allow you to use. So make sure you're using the right type of file format and you're following uh, these, these specific properties here. And you also need to add a URL. This would be the organization associated with the logo. So your logo itself will be an actual URL, uh, and then you also want to have a URL property with that. So you just want to make sure that you follow these guidelines if you want to earn these rich features associated with them. So there's definitely a lot of resources online. This is something we cover pretty in depth within our course about mastering structured data for rich results. But if you're just getting your feet wet and you're starting to learn about it, this is where you can find that information. And of course, if you have any questions, just comment on this video. We'd love to help you and continue that conversation with you. So where do you put this, this markup? How do you add it to your website? Well, it can be added to pretty much any website page. And typically, we'll use JSON-LD, some form of JSON-LD. JSON-LD is just data. Um, it's that code that we, we saw over on the schema.org site. It doesn't change the design of your site. It doesn't impact your speed. It's just data. It's just information. It's metadata. So it's data about data. So you can put it on your site by copying and pasting it into an HTML block. You can use WordPress plugins if you're using WordPress. You can even use Google Tag Manager. You're just going to have to tweak it slightly because Google Tag Manager no longer supports JSON-LD and you've got to use uh, a wraparound that, that we have within the course that, that turns it into JavaScript, but that's getting too complex. Or you can leverage Google Tag Manager, but you got to make uh, a couple of code manipulations for it to work there. The number one thing you need to think about when thinking of where you want to add it are the pages themselves. Now you can add lots of different markup to the page, but you need to be careful that you're helping the content become more machine readable and you're, you're not adding too much where it's actually causing confusion. So we try to focus you know, our main pages on one main type of markup for those pages and then we'll add in extra properties to help explain it in more detail. So for your home page, you might have organization market. For your about us page, you can use about page market. For product page, you'd obviously want to use product market. For contact page, you can use contact page market. For a single blog, you can use article or blog posting, whichever is, is more uh, representative of what content you create. And maybe you've got a frequently asked uh, questions page, and for that, you're going to want to use FAQ. Now, these are just some examples, but you definitely want to take the time to map this project out so that you have your markup in the correct areas. And then you can add into your page in the way that's most easy for you to manage and continue to make changes and tweaks as you need to. So why does all of this matter? Why should you even go through the trouble of adding this to your website? Well, as we said before, Google uses structured data to help better understand your site and enable rich features. Uh, rich features have a significant impact on click-through rate. We've seen this time and time again. Those FAQ boxes and listings can have a massive impact on the click-through rate and give you a lot more real estate within the SERPs. So as you can see, if you're using article, maybe you're a new site, you can get articles like this within the search results. If you're using an FAQ markup, you can have this type of markup show on your site. For products, not only can you get the listings on regular Google search like you see here, but you can also get product tags within image search. And this is only enabled through the correct use of product structured data. So structured data is a game changer. It can really help you optimize your site. It can help expand the visibility you have in the SERPs. And if you want to learn how to use this at a more detailed level, uh, I highly recommend you check out our course, Mastering Structured Data and Schema.org for rich results. We give everybody on YouTube 25% off. Just use the code YouTube and you can sign up today at learn.simplifiedsearch.net. 
If you have any questions on what we talked about today, please comment below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share it with a friend. And until next time, happy marketing.